All right, let's get this meeting started. First item on the agenda is, surprise, surprise, covering the front desk at lunch again. Bob? If you're like most people, you probably watched this group and were horrified by the way these people treated each other. You may have thought that Leo was a pushover, that Faye was pushy, and that Bob just didn't care about this issue one way or the other. You probably noticed these behaviors because they smack the observer in the face. You can't help but notice them. Because we notice them, we tend to view the behaviors as the problem. But the behaviors are mostly a symptom of a bigger problem. I mean, I suppose it's possible that Faye is always a jerk and that Leo is always this weak and maybe Bob is always this bored, but it's not very likely. Chances are that most of these behaviors are in response to something. And in this case, the behaviors are in response to what's missing, which are rules. There were no rules that this group followed for how to generate new ideas, make decisions, or get its work done. Now, let me give you an example. I just bought Monopoly Canada, which is a great game, and there are at least 11 pages of rules that everyone who plays needs to know about and agree to before the game begins. There are rules about what to do when you're the banker, how to buy property, how to auction property, sell properties, buy houses, go to jail, get out of jail, free parking, you name it. If everyone played by their own rules, no one would play the game. We do this with sports games as well. In soccer, for example, there are over 130 pages of rules. In most group gatherings, though, there are none. No rules, only topics. So if Monopoly and soccer were to make it onto a typical meeting agenda, this is what it would say. Monopoly, soccer. It would have the topics, but it wouldn't describe the rules. So, people show up, everyone has their own set of rules in their heads, and when people start playing by their own rules, well, we know what happens. Nothing gets done, people get frustrated, they start behaving badly because they're frustrated, and then everyone starts blaming everyone else for the fact that nothing's getting done. Frank, Faye, hello. Could I refer you to a ground rule number two, respect for each other, right? That's why I'm talking and you're listening. Now, Frank, I know you're new here, but Faye, I would expect more from you. If you want to share something, I, uh, share it with the whole group, not just with Frank. The struggle with group work is not new. In fact, in 1863, the notion that groups need rules was first introduced by Colonel Henry Martin Roberts after a horrible experience he had in trying to chair a community meeting. He was so shaken by the experience that he vowed to never set foot in front of another group until he knew more about how to do it. And his research led him to create Roberts' Rules of Order. Robert's Rules has over 20 chapters of rules, not including the appendices, which govern how members are supposed to make motions, pass motions, essentially participate. The clip we watched illustrates what happens when group members done. don't design a good group process. That's it. I give up. You guys figure it out. So the next part of this lecture looks at what goes into a good group process so that you can design one and positively influence one. So a quick recap. We've said that a group's process refers to the rules it's agreed to follow in order to get its work done, just like the rules in Monopoly and Soccer. So process in facilitation terms refers to how the group has agreed to work with each other, and content refers to what the group is working on. Kurt Lewin, widely regarded as the founder of social psychology, was among the very first to research group dynamics, a phrase that he coined. His research showed a common tendency that anyone who has been part of a group has experienced for group members to over-immerse themselves in the content of their discussion and fail to design an effective group process. Before groups delve into their content, they need to design and agree to a process for number one, making important group decisions, number two, generating a wide range of new ideas, number three, selecting preferred ideas, Number four, planning for implementation of those new ideas. And number five, sharing information. Of this list, all of those are important, but in my 22 years of experience, the most important one pertains to making important group decisions. Groups need to agree in advance how they're going to make the decision and what type of decision-making method they're going to use in order to reach that decision.